America's most enjoyable cigarette presents... Racket Squad. Remember this. You can smoke for pleasure today. No cigarette hangover tomorrow. That is the big advantage you enjoy in Philip Morris. Remember, Philip Morris is made differently from any other leading brand. And that difference is your guarantee of everything you've ever wanted in a cigarette. Tasty mildness, rich flavor, pleasant aroma. A clean, refreshing smoke and no cigarette hangover. Yes, you'll be glad tomorrow you smoked Philip Morris today. Captain Braddock, Captain Braddock, ready. What you're about to see is a thrilling and dramatic real-life story taken from the files of the police racket and bunco squads, business protective associations, and similar sources all over the country. It is presented by Philip Morris as a public service to expose the confidence game. The carefully worked out frauds by which confidence men take more money each year from the American public than all the bank robbers and thugs with their violence. I call this file the case of check and double check. One of the most ruthless crimes ever brought to the attention of this office. It centered around Mrs. Jenkins, a widow, and her son, Danny. again. So what if I was? Danny, you've been out every night this week and the week before. Where do you go? Mom, you gotta realize I'm not a baby anymore. I know, but you're not a growing man either. Oh, no, I help with the bills, don't I? Yes, that's just it. Where have you been getting the money? Working, I told you a million times. Working where, Danny? What kind of a job Will is you it? you stop nagging me? I asked you a question, Danny, and I expect an answer. Well, you're not gonna get one. Danny, you come back here this minute. Nothing, thank you. Is uh, Danny home? Uh, no, Father, he isn't. He just went out. Father, it's Danny I called you about. I don't know what's gotten into the boy. I can't manage him at all. He used to be such a good boy. He is a good boy. What seems to be the trouble, Mrs. Jenkins? Perhaps I can help. Well, you know, Father, it hasn't been easy for me since Mr. Jenkins passed down. Mm -hmm. My job pays very little, and even with Danny working part-time, we just about make ends meet. I see. I, I didn't know Danny was working. I guess that's why he hasn't been down to the gym the past few weeks. You know, that boy of yours is quite a basketball player, and the team certainly misses him. But uh, go on with your story. He won't tell me where he works, Father, what kind of a job it is, and if he works after school, where does it go every night? Every night? Yes, Father. Well, he's a boy, and I suppose he's at the age where he's beginning to feel important. I'll talk to him, if you like. I don't mean to be disrespectful, Father, but I don't think it'd do any good. 
It isn't just his going out nights. He's been spending far too much money. Last week, he bought me a, a new iron. It must have cost $20. And this week, he got himself a new baseball glove and a, a catcher's mask. He couldn't possibly earn that much money. No. Gee, that is rather odd. And then tonight, I found this in one of his books. $33. Father, you don't think that Danny would steal. Now, we mustn't jump to conclusions. Perhaps the boy is in some kind of trouble. I'm sure we can help him. As a matter of fact, there's a police captain that drops down the gym every so often to referee a basketball game. I'll speak to him tomorrow. We'll find out what this is all about. You won't let them arrest Danny, will you, Father? No, no. You just let me take care of everything. All right, Father, I, if you say so. But I, I know he's in trouble. Now, Danny's a good boy. Don't you go worrying about things. Everything will be all right. Goodbye, Father. Now, remember, we've already worked this district. If anybody asks you any questions, you don't know anything about it. You've never been there. Is that understood? Yes. Are there any questions? Yeah, I got one, teacher. I wasn't talking to you. Pardon me for living. I just want to know what time this clam bake will be over. It's interfering with my social life. It'll be over when I say so. And lay off that giggle water. You've got a job to do tomorrow. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Now we'll go over our assignments again. Butch, where do you go and what do you do? The hardware store, 5th and Main. I buy a heating pad for my mother. She saw him sick in bed and the doc says to get her one right away. I pay the sucker with a check and then I get the change in cash. What if he won't cash your check? Then I turn on the tears. What if he wants identification? Then I show him a bill made out to mom or a letter addressed to her. What if it doesn't work? Then I tell him to call you here if he doesn't believe me. The number is Sycamore 28002. Very good. Paul, you're next. Okay, I mean, here goes. Brown's department store downtown. I buy some blankets, then go through the check cash routine, same as Butch. Where's your mother? Why can't she buy the blankets? She has to stay home and wait for the man to deliver a new refrigerator. I guess that covers it. Danny, how about you? Uh, well, uh, uh, f first I, uh, uh... Come on, Danny. You know it. Lee's grocery store. I go in and load up with groceries and, and give the guy the check. What then? What's your story? Well, we just moved to the neighborhood, and, and uh, Mom's waiting for the doctor, because uh, he's coming to see uh, my little baby brother, and he's so sick that Mom can't leave him, and there's no food at home. Is that what you want, Irene? Fine, Danny. Fine. And don't be nervous about tomorrow. There's nothing to worry about. You just remember what I taught you. How will I mean? Now, Lorraine, we'll run through yours. Let's ask it out, huh? Go home, son? Now, uh, you've already come into the drugstore and picked up the things you'll need. You know, baby bottles, nipples, vitamins, uh, baby food, and so on. Now, I'll be the druggist, and you hand me the check. Just use a piece of paper off your scratch pad there. Mmm. Allotment check from the government, huh? Is this your mother's signature? Yes, ma'am. Pretty big check. How come she didn't come in herself? Well, she's home with the baby. He has colic. It's a good thing the check came today. Ma sure can use it. Mm, I don't know. Oh, I guess it's all right. What's your phone number and address? Why, well, I don't know the address yet, Irene. <laughs> of course you don't. How stupid of me. You couldn't possibly know until I give you the check. Well, if the druggist asks any questions, you know what to tell him. As a last resort, have him phone me. Well, I guess that's all for tonight, kids, huh? Now, you be sure and be here right after school tomorrow, huh? Okay. Goodbye now. Goodbye. Bye. Don't be late. Okay. Ooh. What a session. Uh, now you and I can get down to business. Yeah, I hope that Danny kid doesn't blow that grocery store deal. I still think you're taking a big chance with him. You worry about what you're supposed to do and let me take care of the kids. Okay, okay. What time does the postman deliver the mail tomorrow morning? About 10 o'clock. You'll be there a little before and you can watch for him. Then I move in and pick up the mail. And be sure and get those checks right back here so that we can endorse them and give them to the kids. They've got to have a little time to learn who their mothers are and where they live, you know. Natch. 
Now, the layout of that apartment building should make this job a cinch to pull. The mailboxes you'll be working on are, are located in the hall there, between the lobby and the street, with doors on either side, but no windows. So, once you're in there alone, no one can see what you're doing. Get it? Got it. So you think the Jenkins boy is in some kind of trouble, Father? I'm afraid so. And I'd like you to find out what it is and help him, if you will. Jenkins. Now, that sounds familiar. Don't I know him from the gym? I brought a picture of him, the basketball team. Danny's the one in the middle, holding the ball. Oh, yes, of course. You say he's been going out every night? Yes, Captain. But where? He won't even tell his mother where he works. Well, whatever it is, it must be pretty important to keep him away from the gym. Yes, and then there's the matter of money. Now, let me get this straight, Father. In addition to the large amounts of money the boy's been spending of late, you say that Mrs. Jenkins found $33 hidden in one of his books. That's right, Captain. And that the money was in an envelope which had been opened. The envelope being the kind that government allotment and subsistence checks are mailed out in. Mm, I don't like the looks of it, Father. I don't like the looks of it at all. Uh, Captain, I promised Mrs. Jenkins we'd try and help Danny. I came here as a friend, asking help for another friend, not as a man reporting a crime suspect. I understand, Father. But if he's broken the law... Just remember, Captain, he's only a boy. And boys aren't born bad. Something or someone makes them that way. Have you talked to Danny? No, I, I haven't. As a matter of fact, his mother said it wouldn't do any good. Then, of course, if he took me into his confidence, must remember my lips would have to remain sealed. Yes, I know. Well, I could talk to Danny, but if he didn't tell me the truth, we might never learn what's behind all this. There's only one thing to do, Father. I'll have Sergeant Emery watch Danny and see what we can find out. Hello, Sergeant Emery, please. Danny had been spotted coming out of school by my man Emery, who then followed him. Danny and Butch were seen going into an apartment building from different directions at Locust and Elm Streets. Where have you been? Oh, you be quiet. All right, now, we don't have too much time, so let's get going. First of all, the money for last week is on your desk. Along with the uh, checks you'll use this afternoon. Necessary mail and uh, bills. Study those names and addresses very carefully. There can be no guesswork. You must be exactly right. About an hour later, Danny and the other kid came out and got into a car with a man who looked kind of familiar to Emory. He couldn't place him, however. A woman also came out with them but Emery didn't get a very good look at it. When the car pulled away, Emery tailed it. The black sedan was heading downtown. I am a Philip Morris cigarette, and I am made differently from any other leading brand. Because of that difference in Philip Morris, you can smoke for pleasure today with no cigarette hangover tomorrow. Yes, that's the big advantage you enjoy in Philip Morris. Look, here comes a Philip Morris smoker. Let's see what happens. He buys a pack of Philip Morris. He opens the pack, lights up, takes a puff, and enjoys the smoother, finer taste of Philip Morris. Right from the start, Philip Morris helps to make the day more pleasant for him. As the morning goes by, he continues to enjoy the contentment and good taste of Philip Morris. Time out for lunch, and Philip Morris adds to the pleasure of his moments of relaxation. For in Philip Morris, he enjoys tasty mildness, rich flavor, pleasant aroma. And in the evening, Philip Morris continues to give him pleasure just as Philip Morris will give you more smoking pleasure all day long. Best of all, tomorrow, when you wake up, 
your throat will feel clean and comfortable. Because thanks to Philip Morris, and only Philip Morris, you can smoke for pleasure today with no cigarette hangover tomorrow. So... You'll be glad tomorrow. You smoked Philip Morris today. And now, back to the case. The trail for the time being ended on 2nd Street, right around the corner from one of the busiest sections of town. Emery parked down the street a little, wondering what it was all about, and why no one was getting out of the black sedan. Your first, Danny. Now go into that grocery store and give it everything you got. And don't get buck fever, we'll all be sunk. Okay, I won't. Okay, take off. Now, that will be $9.48. Yes, sir. $65. Don't you have any cash? No, sir. That's all I have. This is a pretty big check, son. I don't know you. Afraid I'll have to say no. Mom said I'd probably have trouble. We just moved into this neighborhood. Well, I'd like to help you out, but if I ran this place on face value alone, I'd be out of business by now. Gosh, I don't know what we're going to do. Well, I'll tell you what, son. You pick out the things you need for now, keep the check, bring me the cash when you get it. I'll take that much of a chance on you. Well, that's awful nice of you, but uh, we need a lot of stuff, and somebody's got to cash the check, and, well, if you don't, maybe nobody else will. Well, that is a problem, isn't it? Uh, your father in the Army, son? Yes, sir, overseas. Mom and I sure miss him. He hasn't even seen my baby brother yet. Well, that's too bad. Well, where's your mother now? Why didn't she come herself? She's home waiting for the doctor. He's coming to see my little baby brother. He's awful sick and Mom can't leave him. Oh, well. What is your mother's name? Bernice. Bernice Bachman. If he only had some kind of identification, a social security card or a driver's oh, license, I might I've be able to... I've got a letter that's addressed to her. It's from her sister in Idaho. To her, but... Well, you can call up Mom if you want her. She's home now. <laughs> well, that's not a bad idea. What's the number? Sycamore 28002. Hello? Hello. Uh, Mrs. Bachman? Uh, Mrs. Bernice Bachman? Yes. Yes, this is Mrs. Bachman. Yes, that's my check. Oh, oh, I see. Well, I, I'd certainly appreciate it very much if you would. You needn't worry. If Uncle Sam's checks aren't any good, why, we might as well all give up. Oh, yes. And thank you again. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye. Well, all right, son. Your mother says it's okay. Now, here's your change. $55.52. When Danny came out of the grocery store loaded with bundles, Emery began to get the drift of things. Everything okay? Yeah, okay. There's no doubt about it, Tom. It all adds up to rifling mailboxes and the check cashing racket. Ties in with all the complaints the postal authorities have been getting. Have you found out who the guy is? The boys are going to pick him up tonight. What about the woman? We don't know anything about her except that she's his wife. Uh-huh. Tom, the time has come for Danny and I to have a little talk. Get over to the Jenkins place and bring him in, will you? Right, Captain. Thanks. Get me the postal inspector's office, will you, please? What's the matter, son? What's troubling you? Nothing. Yes, there is. 
You want to tell me about it? Mom? I've done something awful. How awful, Danny? What is it? I joined a gang. First, it didn't seem like I was doing wrong. Then... Then you what? I, I did it just to please you, Mom. Honest, that's why I did it. Did what, son? You, you didn't steal. It was worse than that. I passed a forged check. It was a government check. Made out to the wife of some soldier. Danny. Who made you do such a terrible thing? Never mind who. Just not gonna do it anymore. And I'm gonna tell him so. While I'm at it, I'm gonna give them all their money back right now. Well, no, Danny, no. Let Captain Braddock handle it. Father O'Day has already spoken to him. Captain Braddock? Father O'Day? Mom, you knew. Son, I found the $33 you hid in one of your books. Yes? Sergeant Emery, police. Oh, well, come in. Danny home? No, he just went out. Have any idea where he went? Mrs. Jenkins, Captain Braddock sent me to pick Danny up. We know all about it. So if you know well, where he... All I know is that he ran out all excited. Said he was going to give back the money to those horrible people. Have you got a phone? No, but there's one right downstairs. Thanks. Captain Braddock, please. This is Emery, Captain. I'm in the phone booth just below the Jenkins apartment. No, I missed Danny. He's on his way over to the Miller place to give back the money. What? Yes, I just found out that Steve Miller is a dangerous criminal with a long record and that his wife served time in prison. The boys are going to pick them up now, so stop Danny before they get there. There may be some trouble, and we don't want him to get hurt. Now, if you don't catch him, I'll see you there. Right, Captain. Outside the building at Locus and Elm. Well, look who's here, Irene. Danny, what brings you here? I got something to say, and I want to get it off my chest. Couldn't it wait till morning? Yeah, what's the rush, kid? Can't wait till morning, because this is the last time I'm going to be here. Well, listen to the kid, Irene. He's kissing us all. Quiet. What's it all about, Daddy? What's happened? I'm fed up, that's what. I told my mom all about it. You did what? What did you tell your mother, Danny? Did you tell her about us, too? I only told her what I did. Here's your money. I don't want it. Well, that's one of your prize pupils for you, Irene. He only told his mother what he did. Oh, shut up. Let me handle Don't it. Don't tell me to shut up. I'm through letting you handle things. You stupid little... Stop it, Steve. Leave the kid alone. Keep out of this. It's all your fault. I said leave the kid alone. Mind your business. You and you'll find out. Two talent punks like you gotta be taught a lesson. Got it out, Steve. Didn't you hear him? Braddock knows about it. Steve, lend them to me. We've got to get out of here. The police will be here any minute. All right. But the kid's coming with us. Maybe for a nice long ride. Are you crazy? Look, well, let's leave the kid here. We're in deep enough now without facing a murder act. I said the kid comes too. Open the door. Open it yourself. From now on, you're on your own. Okay, if that's the way you want it. Open the door, kid. Go on. And don't try any funny business, or I'll let you have it right now, in the back. Go on, open it. All right, Miller, drop that gun and put up your hands. You should live so long. Do as he says, Miller, or I'll make you look like a canceled check. 
Go on, drop it. All right, Emery, you can come in now. Oh, you needn't bother packing. They'll furnish all the clothing you'll need where you're going. All right, Emery, take her. You're coming with me, Danny. We're going to have a nice long talk. And so ended the case of check and double check. Steve Miller was indicted, tried, and convicted. But there are many more Steve Millers in every city in the United States. Men who are actively engaged in the various swindles practiced daily throughout the country. And women, too. Don't forget Irene. Let this story serve as a warning for you to be on the alert against the con men. Don't cash checks unless you know the endorser. Don't pay out good money for a piece of paper. If you're ever in doubt, call your bank, the police, or any protective organization you may belong to. Because remember, it can happen to you. In a moment, we'll call for a few scenes from next week's show. But first... Remember this, you can smoke for pleasure today. No cigarette hangover tomorrow. That is the big advantage you enjoy in Philip Morris. Remember, Philip Morris is made differently from any other leading brand. And that difference is your guarantee of everything you've ever wanted in a cigarette. Tasty mildness, rich flavor, pleasant aroma. A clean, refreshing smoke and no cigarette hangover. So... Call for Philip Morris! You'll be glad tomorrow you smoked Philip Morris today. Next week, be sure to see Heartbreak for Sale. I warned you against that man. Why did you have to do this? You of all people. I'm not supposed to tell you this, but... I've got Ernie working for you. Ernie? Who's Ernie? Now, you don't expect Mr. Vincent to dig into his own pocket, do you? But the last time, you said that was the final check. See Racket Squad next week, same time, same station. It is through your loyalty to Philip Morris cigarettes that we're able to bring you this program in the interest of the public. That means you. The case you've just seen is true. It should serve as a warning for all of us to be on the alert against the professional racketeer. Philip Morris believes, as I do, that a person or community so forewarned will not be abused. Good night. <laughs>